How's it going? In this video, I'm going to show you two things. The first is how to install the WLED software on an ESP32 to use with the Dig Quad. Second is how to wire up the Dig Quad. You ready? Here we go. When you first open up your brand spanking new Dig Quad, this is what you're going to see. This part right here is the ESP32 Wi Fi controller. If you've tried to power up your Dig Quad and either no lights come on this board or the lights come on but you don't see the WLED access point, then perhaps you need to reflash this board with WLED. So that's what we're going to do first. So remove this board from the Dig Quad, pops off just like that. Then grab a micro USB cable that you're sure has data wires in it. Some of them have just power wires. Make sure you have one that has data wires as well. Next step is to grab the appropriate software. So first we're going to go to the WLED GitHub page, go to releases, click on the latest. If you're using the Dig Quad, then the release that you want is the ESP32 LED pin 16 version. So grab that, download it somewhere where you won't lose it, and there you go. Now we're also going to need some software to load that file onto the ESP32 board. For that, I'm going to use ESP Home Flasher. Going to the latest releases, which is this page, there's a Mac version, an Ubuntu version, and then a couple Windows versions. I'm going to use this Windows version. Once it's downloaded, you can start it up. Skip ahead past the warning. This is what it looks like. Connect your ESP32 board to your computer with the micro USB cable that you're sure has data wires in it. Then under serial port, select whatever COM pops up. Should only be one. Then on firmware, click browse. Scroll down until you find that WLED version that you just downloaded. WLED, right now it's 10.2, ESP32, LED pin 16. That's the one you need. Open that file, it'll load up right here in the firmware box. Now you just hit flash ESP. If you run into this permission error, you may just need to restart your computer. After a restart, it should work. And there it goes. Man, look how fast that goes. Zoom! Okay, great. Now you'll probably see this brownout error, and that's just because the USB port that you're connected to isn't providing enough power to keep this thing running. But that's okay, the flash worked, and that's all you need. If you want to get the version of WLED that allows you to run four different effects off of four different channels on the Dig Quad, this is where you get it. This is the one I would recommend, probably the one most of us would use. The process is the same no matter what version of WLED you use. This version, 10.2, Quin LED, Dig Quad. ESP32 multi pin 300 bin. That's what we want. Now we just flash. I just unplugged it and then refreshed this serial port option up here. That gets rid of that permission error. Okay, that's it. It's done. Still shows the same brownout error. If for any reason your ESP home flasher isn't working or you just don't like it, you can try NodeMCU PY flasher. It looks very similar because it works pretty much the same way. Go to releases, and then grab the version that you want. When it's downloaded, start it up. This has the option of just auto-selecting the first port with an expressive device connected, so you don't have to know which port it is. Firmware, browse and find the same one that we've been using. You can leave the baud rate, keep the flash mode as DIO, Decide whether or not you want to erase everything. I'm just going to say yes, and that's it. Flash. And it already detected that COM6 is the COM port that has my ESP32 connected to it. So ESP Home Flasher or NodeMCU PY Flasher, pretty equivalent. NodeMCU PY Flasher has a few other options to set, which may cause some confusion. But if ESP Home Flasher is not working for you, you can try this one instead. I do like at the end of this that it reminds you that you do need to unplug and plug it back in to get it into normal boot mode. So don't forget to do that. All right, this baby is flashed. Once your ESP32 device is flashed, look for available Wi-Fi access points. 
Hopefully you find one that says WLED access point. Connect to that. The password is WLED1234. Then go to 4.3.2.1. And this is the landing page for the WLED access point. First thing you want to do in most situations is go into Wi-Fi settings and connect it to your network. Name it something unique. And I like to disable the Wi-Fi sleep. Save and it'll reboot and connect to your network. Okay, here is my brand new WLED board. The IP address is 151. So I'm gonna to connect to that. Now in here I can change all the other settings like how many LEDs I have, how big is my power supply, whether I have five volt or 12 volt, the RGB color order, and on and on. If your DigiQuad ESP32 board is working, but you want to use the multi-channel firmware, you can update it over the air. Go to settings, security and updates, manual update, and then choose a file. Browse your computer until you find that Quinn LED multi-pin 300 bin file and update it. It should keep your Wi-Fi connection information. So you don't have to look for the access point after you do this. It will just reconnect to your Wi-Fi network once it's done. And there it is, it's back. Hopefully that was enough of an explanation to help you be able to put WLED on your ESP32 if for some crazy ridiculous reason it wasn't there when you opened up your DigiQuad. Now let's look at wiring the DigiQuad. So let me point out some of the connection points here. These are the data connections. There are four of them. If you just use the normal WLED software, you'll only connect to pin one, which is this one. But if you use the multi-channel binary file, then you can connect to all four or just whichever ones and however many you want. So this is where your data wire is gonna go. This is output ground, this is output power. This side is input power and ground. And then these connectors here are special and are only used if you want to have a different power supply for your ESP control board than you have for your LEDs. Most people probably aren't gonna use this. First, let me explain this jumper. If you're gonna use 12 volt LEDs, you will also need a 12 volt power supply and you will want this jumper right there. You can see that little tiny 12 volts written down there. So with the jumper in this position, you can connect 12 volts plus here, minus here, and that will power the ESP32 with the five volts that it needs and give you 12 volt outputs to go to your LEDs. If you have five volt LEDs, you want the jumper here. In that case, you can connect five volts from your power supply to the plus and minus on this side, and you will get five volts on the output side. One more position is to put the jumper over here. With the jumper in this position, you can now connect a separate five volt power supply to these two terminals. And this will only power the ESP32 chip. In addition to this power supply, you will need a separate power supply to power your LEDs. So with the jumper in this position, the power to the Wi-Fi controller, which is the ESP32 board, is separated from the power that goes to the LEDs. I'm gonna go through examples of each one of those connections. We'll start with 12 volts. So I put my jumper in the 12 volt position. I wanna point out also, there are seven terminals here that are positive output terminals, seven of them, but there are only five fuses. The way it works is whatever you connect to the first two, go to this fuse. Whatever you connect to the second two, go to that fuse. And then this one goes to this fuse, this one goes to this fuse, and this one goes to that fuse. Okay, let's get it connected. So the data goes in here, Positive goes over here, and then ground over here. So ground here, data on the first terminal here, and power here. The other end of this wire right now is just bare, but I'm gonna connect it to this so that I can plug it into a strip of LEDs. I'm just gonna connect these with some wire nuts. All right, so now I've got my outputs connected. The end of my wire is connected to one of these connectors to make it easy to connect to the LEDs. So now we can just plug the LEDs into the output 
of the controller. Now for power. Because I've got this set on 12 volts, I'm gonna use these outside terminals. Okay, positive there, negative over here. On the other end, I've got it connected to one of these. So before I plug this in, I wanna finally mount my ESP32 board. The ESP32 gets mounted with the antenna sticking out. Now, I should be able to connect it and get some LEDs lighting up, yay. So that's 12 volt connection, that's it. My webcam hates LED lighting, <laughs> but you can see it's changing colors. Now let's connect it to five volts. It's not gonna be terribly different. I can use the same wiring, I'm just gonna connect different LEDs. These are some really cool WS2812 fairy lights. They're not waterproof, so you can't put them outside, but they're super cool for decorating inside. And they only come in five volts. We're gonna move this jumper now over here to five volts. If at this point I were to plug in 12 volts with this thing on five, this would die and potentially the LEDs and maybe some other components on the dig quad. So please be careful about that. I'm double checking to make sure that I have a five volt power supply. There's five volts. And there's my fancy pixie lights, yay. Again, my webcam doesn't really like LEDs, but in person, these are awesome. So for completeness, let's also use the external power supply or the separate power supply for the ESP32. So I'm going to connect one power supply here that's 5 volts. It's going to power the ESP32. And then what I've got connected over here is going to be 12 volts and it's going to go to the LEDs. Let's make sure we're using 12 volt LEDs, not my beautiful 5 volt pixie lights. Those will die 12 volts. So in this scenario, we want the jumper over here. The five volts goes on the left and the ground goes on the right. So now this one is five volts. I don't smell any smoke. <laughs> My LEDs did not turn on by the way, because all I'm powering right now is the ESP32 board. This power supply is going to these terminals out here and will power the LEDs. So when I plug this in, my LEDs will have power. And there they are. Oh. Great. So that's how you can isolate the power supply that's going to the LEDs from the ESP32 board. The very last thing that I'll talk about is power injection. So all these extra terminals over here are there just to make power injection from the dig quad to your strips of LEDs much more convenient. So to do power injection, you need another pair of wires or potentially multiple pairs of wires. But you take this pair of wires and you connect it to some of these extra positive and negative wires that they give you down the string of LEDs. So that's it, positive to positive, negative to negative. You can do this multiple times. You can do it just once halfway down or at the end. I've got a whole other video about power injection. But this is how you connect it to the LED strip or string. The other end connects to the output terminals on the dig quad. All of these terminals are available for power injection. Down here on the side, you've got extra grounds. Just for kicks, I connected my negative to one of these side terminals, just to show you that you can. And I connected the positive to this third terminal, which is connected to this second fuse. So these two terminals go to this fuse, the next two terminals go to that fuse, and then this terminal to this fuse, this one to this fuse, and that one to the last fuse. For the example, I'm just gonna connect one, but if necessary, you could connect them all. So I have one negative here and another over here. I've got one positive here and another there. And then just one data, that's all you need. The data doesn't get injected. It starts at the beginning and it just travels through in a line. On the other side, I still have my Wi-Fi board power supply here with the jumper in this position. And then the power supply for the LEDs is connected to these. Okay, this is five volts. Great. Wi-Fi board powers up, doesn't smoke. I don't smell anything burning or melting. This is 12 volts for the LEDs. Plug that in and the LEDs are on. So there it is. That's how you connect extra wires to the dig quad for power injection. Easy peasy, right?
So that's it. This is the Dig Quad. That's how you wire it up. This is the ESP32 chip. That's how you load WLED on it. What else do you need to know? If I left anything out, let me know in the comments. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.